Circa Circus changed the way people view slot machines in Las Vegas forever. You can kind of give it them credit for all of the slot gambling that happens in Vegas today. Here's a history on that and why it exists in the way that it does. And my name is Steven and I'm not leaving Las Vegas and let's go with the video. By the way, leave us a comment. Do you play slots when you come to Las Vegas or do you think it's a giant waste of time? Are you more of a thinker? You like to play those table games or do you have a secret system for playing slots? I've seen people say that they do exist. So 1974, Circus Circus was sold. We're gonna go into a history video on Circus Circus in the future, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell for notifications. However, William Bennett and William Pennington purchased the Circus Circus from Stan Mallon and Jay Sarno in 1974. And at the time, the casino was losing money left, right, and center. It was being robbed blind by the old management, which they well, quickly fired, and they just couldn't make much money at the Circus Circus. However, what they did do was something very smart. They called up a friend who was uh, currently a boss manager type person at the Sahara Lake Tahoe, which you might know now in Lake Tahoe as the uh, Mont Blue. I believe it's called the Mont Blue. And what they knew about that casino was that they were posting huge record amounts. They didn't understand how they were so profitable up in Lake Tahoe until they found out that the manager at that casino property figured out that everybody else in Lake Tahoe was paying out big on their slot machines. Now, at the time in Las Vegas, slot machines were not something that you were considered to be making money from. Slot machines were something that you gave to the general public who didn't feel like they wanted to play table games. Maybe they were intimidated by them. They were just a quick little money grab. And you would set your odds on the slot machines and you didn't really think about those odds at all. Turns out that up in Lake Tahoe, they were paying out 97 or 98 cents on every single dollar, which didn't make any sense in Las Vegas until they realized that by setting their odds so high to pay out, people were getting paid more often, sitting at the machine more often, but they were doing something pretty phenomenal. They were pumping all that money back into the machine. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if the Circus Circus were to pay out $100,000 in the 1970s to players, there was a good chance that they were going to get close to $98,000, $99,000 of that money right back into the casino while people just sat there and played the games over and over and over again. And as a side note, if you don't know this, in Las Vegas, you can walk up to the machines, I think it's the same in most parts of the country, and look at the pay scale and know that those slots are paying out 97 cents on every dollar, 96 cents, 99 cents. And of course, nowadays, the higher the odds on the slots, uh, the more money you have to put in. So if it's a 99% payout, you're probably paying five, playing five or $10 spins on a slot machine. Penny slots pay out a lot lower, but this was a way that the Circus Circus started to make money. Now at the time, the Circus Circus was a private company. They didn't have to tell anybody about what they were doing. They purchased the Slots of Fun Casino, which exists to this day. They also purchased the Silver City Casino across the street, which is now a commercial development plaza, which was just sold a few months back, which will probably be raised to the ground. Who knows what's gonna happen? And these were known as grind joints. Grind joints is actually a derogatory term in the in the sense of Las Vegas, meaning that if you're going to be a dealer at a grind joint or if you're running a grind joint, you're a manager, then you were not really in a really luxurious place. At the time, the Sands, the Dunes, the Tropicana, these were the glamorous casinos where all the celebrities would go, you know, the Flamingo and all this kind of stuff. This is where celebrities would go, play the table games, throw away, throw around the $100 hands of blackjack and craps, and that was where the dealers wanted to play. However, the managers at Circus Circus at the time reportedly would sit at the bar with other managers from the higher end properties, tell them they were a manager at the Circus Circus and be laughed at. Meanwhile, they were making so much money for working at the Circus Circus, but they couldn't tell anybody until one thing happened, until the Circus Circus had to go public. You see, William Bennett and William Pennington started making so much money as private owners of the Circus Circus, and they added hotels to the Circus Circus, and then when they ran out of hotel rooms, they made deals with other small properties and said, can we use your hotel rooms? We'll truck people in because we have all these slots. They ran ads and billboards. Again, they're gonna do a whole video on this, on the, on the history, but they ran billboards and California guaranteeing people a $14 room rate at Circus Circus because they knew that they could just put them at another hotel and truck them into the hotel uh, casino floor to do some gambling. They made so much money that eventually 
they, they realized, what if something happened to me? What if I had a massive heart attack? Well, my family would be shouldered with all of this uh, uh, um, inheritance uh, taxes and they would go bankrupt. So they incorporated the company and when they did that, they went public with it as Circus Circus Enterprises. And Wall Street and all these people said, you're making how much money? And they said, yeah, well, you know, this is what we did. We had the slots, we did the buffets, we added everything, we added the hotel towers, and now we're making hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars just off of the slots. And that's it. And everything after that went berserk. Slot machine technology has accelerated to a point where now in Las Vegas you have skill-based slots where you can actually play mini games like you're playing a cell phone game in the middle of your games so you actually have a chance at winning on those slot machines however we all know there's always a house advantage so don't get me wrong I'm not telling you that you're gonna go play a skill-based game and all of a sudden you're gonna game the system and win a hundred thousand dollars or something ridiculous like that that's probably not gonna happen but we now have the video game aspect in the slot machines we have slot machines that are hot you know high definition 4k screen I've seen holographic slot machines. Slot machines are themed after major movie franchises, major TV franchises, major video game franchises, and the slot technology is ridiculous. There's a few major players in slot machines. There's Scientific Games, there's IGT, there's Konami. Williams sold out, I think they sold out to IGT or Scientific years ago. It's so big that video game manufacturers such as Konami, who used to make video games for the Nintendo and the PlayStation, predominantly just make slot machines now. So that's how much of a big business slot machines has become in the city. And it really does go back to what the Circus Circus realized, which is the psychology of slots, the gaming aspect of slot machines. If somebody sits down at a machine and the machine is just spinning and making noises and kicking back that dopamine reward system in our brain, we're gonna sit at the machine looking for the next reward. And it is a psychological aspect, and is it evil? I don't know, I mean, it's the way human beings are programmed. If you see something, you like something, you get a reward from something, you wanna get another bigger, nicer, better reward. You know, years ago, researchers did um, some experiments with chimps, and with the chimps, they had different lines and different colors, and every single time, the chimp would see a little blip come down the yellow line, and you'd press a button, then uh, the reward would be, some uh, nectar like from mango or something like that and the chimp got used to that so every time it saw that color it would get a reward color reward color reward and then it stopped giving the reward and then the chimp didn't like that very much and it got frustrated and it got agitated and the reward fired up again boom there's my reward system. So the slot machines do kind of hit our kickback reward system in our brain. That's something that we get drawn to and attracted to. And yes, it can be fun. It can be fun to play the slot machines. You can have a good time playing slots. And the only problem is you can also have a bad time playing slots. And the way our brains are wired are all the same, but all a little bit different. Some of you folks know your limits. You know what not to do. You know, you know what's gonna be bad for you. Some of us don't know that until we come to Vegas and we end up being like Carlton in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air episode where they go, I think they go to Vegas and they go to Caesar's Palace and he's just like mad at Will and he's like, come on, Will, look, 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 it's, it's black, black, red, black, black, and he can't get his reward and he's so frustrated. So don't let that become you when you come to Las Vegas. But the moral of the story is this, Circus Circus had a great, great concept. They opened up the amount of payouts to slot players. They realized that slot players will sit there and they will feed back 98 cents or 99 cents on every dollar that they win back into the casino floor. It would keep people in the casino floor, keep them gaming, keep them eating at the place, keep them making money, and they made so much money that again, when they went public, nobody even understand what they were possibly doing to do all that. Because Circus Circus, it was a grind joint. It was not a great place to work. It was just laughed at in terms of the big high-end Las Vegas casinos. Little did they know, they found the secret sauce. And that secret sauce to Las Vegas exists to this day. So there you go. So that's my video on the psychology of slots, but I'm curious what you think about it. Do you play slots while you're in Vegas? Do you think it's a giant waste of time? What's your take? And you tell me in the comments below. You go over to Facebook and you type in Not Leaving Las Vegas group and you join our group and you talk about this kind of stuff and you stay up to date on Vegas. And you subscribe to this channel, you like it, you share it, you comment it, and you hit the little bell for notifications. Now, my name is Steven. 
I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. I got to get to my job, but I appreciate you watching more than you know. If you want to be in the credits of this video, you should head on over to Patreon, pledge any kind of an amount, and this will be you in about two, one. I got to go. Here's the credits. Click.